Thanks, sir. Good morning, students. Today we'll be discussing about the liver. So you can see here I have a specimen of the liver. Okay. Now let's see how to hold this in anatomical position. Okay. First of all, you put your finger, middle finger preferably, into the inferior vena cava, and you support the with your thumb the inferior border. So in this way you can hold the liver in anatomical position. So whenever the examiner asks you to hold the liver in the anatomical position, you can put your finger in the inferior vena cava and support with your thumb the inferior border and hold it like this. So this is the this is the way you hold the liver in anatomical position. Okay. Now let's see what are the subdivisions, surfaces, borders, okay, ligaments, lobes of the liver. Now first of all, let's see the surfaces. Now the liver has got basically two surfaces. One is the diaphragmatic surface, the other one is the inferior or the visceral surface. Now the diaphragmatic surface is further divided into anterior, superior, posterior okay, and right surface. So once again I will tell you there are basically two surfaces in the liver. One is the diaphragmatic surface which is convex, diaphragmatic surface is convex. The other one is concave visceral surface which is actually posterior inferior which is known as the visceral surface or the inferior surface, visceral surface or the inferior surface. Okay. So the diaphragmatic surface is very smooth okay, and it you can see it is actually convex in shape, convex. Okay. The diaphragmatic surface can be further divided into anterior surface, superior surface, right surface, posterior surface, then you have this inferior surface which is not the diaphragmatic surface. So there are four parts, okay, so anterior, superior, right and posterior surface. These are the diaphragmatic surface and the fifth one is the inferior surface which is actually postro inferior in position. It is postro inferior in position. When I hold it like this, when I hold the liver like this, the inferior surface will be postro inferior, postro inferior. So it is the visceral surface because the viscera are in contact, various viscera are in contact with the visceral surface or the inferior surface which is postro inferior in position. Now, Coming to subdivisions of the liver, if you see the liver from the anterior aspect, there is a ligament here, this is anteriorly you can see this ligament, this is the falciform ligament, let me show you, this is the falciform ligament. Now the falciform ligament is dividing the liver into right anatomical lobe and left anatomical lobe, a large anatomical lobe and a smaller left lobe, these are the anatomical lobes. Okay, so the anterior subdivisions of the liver is mainly done by the falciform ligament which is dividing the liver into a large right lobe and a small left lobe that is anteriorly. Posteriorly if you see and you can see here this is the fissure for ligamentum venosum, fissure for ligamentum venosum, this is the fissure for ligamentum venosum. Now this is dividing this one and then you can see there is one more fissure here. Now this is dividing the posteriorly and uh, posteriorly and inferiorly. These fissures are dividing, dividing the liver into anatomical right and left lobes. So you can see anteriorly it is the falciform ligament which is dividing the liver into right and left lobe. So if you come posteriorly, you can see here posteriorly you can see this is the fissure for ligamentum venosum. Here you have ligamentum venosum which is actually the remnant of ductus venosus. And then you can see there is one more fissure here where there is a round ligament of the liver or the ligamentum teres. Now this fissure and this fissure together, this fissure is dividing the liver into anatomical right and left lobes. Okay, so these are the anatomical lobes. So anatomically, the liver has got a large right lobe and a small left lobe. But if you see, functionally, the liver is different. Means functional lobes of the liver or the physiological lobes of the liver are different from the anatomical lobes. Okay, now for the the, the, the demarcation for the functional lobe is not the falciform ligament, but is known as a Cantley's line. Cantley's line. So you draw a line from the inferior vena cava 
okay up to the gall bladder fundus of the gall bladder okay so this line this line will demarcate this line will demarcate the functional right and functional left lobe so you can see anteriorly it is not the falciform ligament which is demarcating the functional lobes but it is a curved line drawn from inferior vena cava okay up to the fundus of the gall bladder so that line is known as the cantilene line which is demarcating the functional right lobe and functional left lobe now in this you can see that in functional lobes almost the right and the left lobe are almost of same size okay and posteriorly and inferiorly there is an other line demarcation line so a line passing through the gall bladder this is the gall bladder you can see this is the gall bladder this is the fossa for the gall bladder this is the fossa for the gall bladder and this is the gall bladder here so you draw a line along the gall bladder along the gall bladder okay draw a line along the gall bladder okay like this okay then we go up to the this is the caudate lobe so we draw a line up to the caudate lobe and then we again join a line to the inferior vena cava so this line this line is a demarcation for the functional right and functional left lobe posteriorly and inferiorly so one second i'll tell you the cantilene line what we saw anteriorly was a line drawn from inferior vena cava to the gall bladder inferior vena cava to the gall bladder that was anteriorly demarcation of functional right and functional left lobe but if you see posteriorly and inferiorly there is a there is a line drawn imaginary line drawn over the gall bladder fossa and then we go on the middle of the caudate lobe and then turn like this to the right on the inferior vena cava and draw a line like this so this this line is the demarcation of the functional right and functional left lobe inferiorly and posteriorly okay now coming to some other parts important Uh, peritoneal relations of the liver okay the liver is completely covered by peritoneum but there are some bare areas there are bare areas the main bare area is a triangular area is a triangular area you can see here this is a triangular area this is the main bare area of the liver it is limited superiorly by the superior layer of the coronary ligament inferiorly by the inferior layer of the coronary ligament both of them join together and form the right triangular ligament now this superior layer of coronary ligament and the inferior layer of coronary ligament the left part join together and form the left triangular ligament this is the left triangular ligament so the coronary ligaments the coronary ligaments what you have seen here the coronary ligaments what you have seen here that is the superior layer and the inferior layer they join on the left aspect like this and they form the left triangular ligament that is a left triangular ligament and this is the right triangular ligament so once again i tell you this is the right triangular ligament this is the left triangular ligament this is the superior layer of the coronary ligament this is the inferior layer of the coronary ligament between the superior and the inferior layer of coronary ligament we have a very large area of bare area where there is no covering of the peritoneum and it is in direct contact with the diaphragm okay now let's see some other area bare areas now the fossa for gall bladder is also a bare area because it is not covered by peritoneum the groove for the inferior vena cava is also a bare area because there is no peritoneum covering the groove for ligamentum venosum the the groove for ligamentum teres all these are areas where the peritoneum is not covering and even this is a porta hepatis you can see the porta hepatis here even the area around the even the area of the porta hepatis is not covered by the peritoneum so here are all the other bare areas the main bare area of the liver is the triangular area what you see here line demarcated by the superior and the inferior layer of the coronary ligament now what we have to see first less other things we have to see is the if you see if you see here this is the caudate lobe this is the caudate lobe and this is the quadrate lobe quadrate lobe okay quadrate lobe so you can see the caudate lobe and the quadrate lobe now the caudate lobe caudate lobe is bounded on this side by the inferior vena cava on this side by the groove for the ligamentum venosum okay now we can see the quadrate lobe the quadrate lobe is lined or demarcated by this side on this side that is this side is actually this side is actually the left side so on the left side it is demarcated by the groove for ligamentum teres or the round ligament of the liver okay and on 
the right side it is demarcated by the fossa for the gallbladder and superiorly it is limited by a fissure a transverse fissure that is a porta hepatis or the hilum of the liver hilum of the liver so apart from the anatomical right lobe left lobe we have to know about the caudate lobe and the quadrate lobe now remember one thing the caudate lobe and the quadrate lobe together they are all part of the anatomical anatomical right lobe anatomical right lobe they are part of anatomical right lobe but if you take of course if you take the functional lobe it is different functional lobe is slightly different which i already described which i already have described okay now look at the porta hepatis here look at the porta hepatis now in the porta hepatis there are some important structures now if you see the first structure what you are seeing here is the portal vein just behind the portal vein is the hepatic artery and then you are having the hepatic ducts that is the bile system hepatic ducts okay the hepatic ducts so once again i'll tell you in the porta hepatis the first structure what you are seeing is the portal vein and then you have the hepatic artery this is the hepatic artery this is the hepatic artery this is the portal vein and these are the hepatic ducts okay of the bile system the hepatic ducts will further join to form the common hepatic duct then that will join the cystic duct that will form the common bile duct okay so to summarize to summarize the liver has got two lobes anatomical lobes a large right lobe and a small left lobe okay and part of the right lobe you have the caudate lobe and the quadrate lobe and here we have the gall bladder now one more thing i want to tell you is that now if you follow this caudate lobe there is an extension of the caudate lobe to the right now this is known as the caudate process this is known as the caudate process this is the caudate process so if you follow the caudate lobe if it has a sense an extension to the right that is the caudate process that is the caudate process okay and there is a rounded elevation here that is known as the papillary process papillary process okay papillary process now apart from this apart from this some basic facts about liver you should know the liver is around 1.5 kg in weight in males it is around 1.6 and in females it is about 1.3 kg it is the largest gland it is the largest gland it is the largest gland it is the largest organ of the, it is the largest abdominal viscera okay it secretes bile all of you know and other metabolic it involves other and it has got other major important metabolic functions other made important metabolic functions now apart from this you should know that there are some surgically resectable segments independent segments hepatic segments now these hepatic segments are numbered in a clockwise manner in a clockwise manner in a clockwise manner okay so these hepatic segments are mainly eight in number if you say in a clockwise manner 1 2 3 4 are in the functional 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 left lobe and 5 6 7 8 8 are in the functional right lobe so 1 2 3 4 are, are in the left lobe and 5 6 7 8 are in the right lobe so these are the surgically resectable independent hepatic segments which can be resected out okay so this is about all about the liver so once again i'll tell you how to hold it in anatomical position this is how you hold it in anatomical position this is how you hold it in anatomical position you put one finger in the inferior vena cava and you support the thumb with the on the inferior border and you hold it like this so where does it where is the location of this liver where is the location the location is the liver occupies mainly the right hypochondrium and epigastrium and little bit it extends even into the left hypochondrium okay thank you